All right, so if you remember, this 32 Aztec and 14 Falcon Ridge was right at 53 pounds, 53.3. Let's see what the factory OEM Can-Am wheels are. I weighed these before, but we'll weigh them again. I don't particularly like this tire. It uh, doesn't really do a lot in good in thick mud, and it's a little hard and stiff for trail riding. It weighs in at 51, let me zoom in for you, 51.7, so almost the same weight, 53.3 pounds. That is a really light setup for that much traction and ground clearance. And this is a, this is a 30 uh, by, or no, this is, a, this is only a 28 by 10. I thought this came with 30, so the only, those are only 28s. So let me show you the difference of them side by side. Pretty huge difference, and they're the same weight. That's why I rave about these Aztecs so much. It's a super, super light setup, and it's got really big voids, and they pull amazing, and they ride smooth because you have the center thing in the center. It's, a, it's an interesting looking tire. It's a lot different than you usually see with this kind of V-tread thing, but it works great. This little cup right here pulls on shoulders really well, and it's super light. That's why I just can't get enough of these tires. I don't know what can was thinking, putting these heavy ass, basically all terrains, because the knobbies are so fat they can't dig, um, on an ATV. This would make more sense on a side-by-side -side where you need the weight carrying capacity. But yeah, not impressed with these tires. Probably just gonna sell them. Um, it's a very heavy setup for very minimal performance. This is what you want. So I got the 32s mounted up. The good news is I have a lot more clearance on the rear that used to be almost getting kissed by the 33s. The bad news is the front is still going to rub when I turn all the way. You can see down in there, it's rubbing in the frame. Not as bad, and it rubs in a different spot than the 33s did. It rubs a little farther forward, um, but it's still rubbing. So I'm gonna have to put those forward arms that just came out, and then I hopefully with the 32s won't have any rubbing. I'm pretty sure with the 33s, the forward arms will still rub at full lock. And full lock is not a requirement, but this thing has such a nice turning radius from the factory, even though it's a longer quad, that I just really wanna maintain that full lock turning ability. Of course, once I put the forward arms, I make it longer, that's gonna, dis that's gonna um, take away from the turning radius itself, right, when you make it longer wheelbase. So, I don't know, there's really no good answer there, I guess, but I'll probably do it just to test the, the forward arm product. This thing is already longer than the Gen 2 Outlander, so I don't wanna make it too much longer. If you put the forward arms on it, that rakes, that shifts the engine weight to the rear wheels, um, which is good for water wheelies and stuff, but it's not good for climbing out of holes. So eventually I wanna have a one and a half inch, two inch front rake and rear rake. Um, there's nothing out for the rear yet. But these tires do look pretty sweet. Um, obviously they're a little ballooned out and goofy because I've got uh, 16 PSI in them right now because I just set the beads. I do have the one inch wheel spacers in the rear and the quarter inch wheel spacers up front. Uh, I did that because that's what I had on there when I was running these six plus one wheels. And also these uh, factory rear wheels are fairly deep dish. So if I didn't have the rear wheel spacers a little thicker, it'd be a little too narrow in the rear. Right now, the way I have it, it's either perfectly square or a little fat in the back, which is honestly good for stability on a water wheel. All right, there's how it sits with the 32s on 14s. Um, it's definitely pretty stanced, uh, meaning the tires hang out past the fenders a little bit. So you're gonna get pretty dirty because um, when it hits a, a rut, right, the tire's gonna stick out more and it's gonna throw mud up on the rider. Um, but it, it's mostly under the fender. It's not totally obnoxious like a Renegade. Ground clearance is really good. And this is all stock. Um, the machine is all stock. I just bolted tires to it and did some trimming. Um, as far as an update on this machine goes, it's been working great, way better than I expected for a Can-Am. The one thing I am worried about that I think is gonna fail eventually is this front drive line. I really don't like the angles on this front drive shaft. That's a lot of angle um, on those U-joints. And on like a Honda, for instance, there's zero angle there. There's no U-joint. So concerned about that. I'm also concerned about the engine mounts. Um, several people have had issues with these engine mounts already. And I'm sure I will have them soon because I'm also running big tires, but these engine mounts are not set up for big tires. Um, the rubber there ends up getting twisted and people are breaking the engine mounts. So that's going to need to get upgraded or solid mounted eventually. But so far, so good. We'll test it out this weekend. 
on these 32s. And again, these tires are ballooned out because they got 15, uh, 16 PSI in them. Once I air them down, they'll look a little flatter and uh, it'll help with this rubbing when steering. I just drove it around the yard and it barely rubs when you're steering, but it does rub a little bit, which is just pretty annoying. See where that knobby kind of goes into that spot I trimmed out there. So time to get the forward arms on order because I got to run at least a 32. Um, this is about the smallest tire I'd want to run on it just because of the size of the machine and because it spins them so easily, you might as well have them. But yep, so far so good with this thing. Snorkels are also working out excellent. Check out the video for that. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And if you want these tires, I can get you 5% off um, with free shipping with my promo code that is uh, in the title page of this video. Um, so yeah, and if you use the promo code, lets the manufacturer know that people I'm recommending are buying the tires and it helps me get new sizes. So I'm trying to get them to make some more rim sizes and a more aggressive tire with a little more tread. And uh, if we use the promo code, it helps me get more influence on what sizes we'll get next. So it helps out everybody. All right, so the new tires are mounted up. As you can see, they look massive. The big one is the 32. These are my old 33s. The reason this looks so big is because it's got 35 PSI in it to set the bead. This has zero PSI in it and has the weight of the Pioneer on it. So this thing is really ballooned out right now. These are very stretchy tires when you go to high PSI. So if you ever do need a bunch of ground clearance, you just pressurize the shit out of them. Um, but obviously, it'll float pretty bad in this configuration. All right, let's see how much it weighs. So we're right at 30 or 53. It's so hard to balance these tires when I was airing them. Um, 53.3 pounds. That is a really light setup for that much traction and ground clearance. At uh, about 33, 32 and a half. 32 and a half. Um, so these tires do measure a little short at what I run, which is like five PSI. And that's not an accident. I think the manufacturer uses 18 PSI as their design pressure. Um, so that's why you know most ATV tires run a little short because most of us don't run 18 PSI. So I'm gonna let the air out of this. I'm gonna show you something interesting that's going on. Um, it has to do with these wheels. So I got these wheels super cheap. They were on sale on highlifter.com. And the reason they were cheap is because they're not the best low PSI wheel. I mean, obviously what you want is a functional bead lock like it's on the Pioneer right here. Um, but these are even worse than that. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna pause the video real quick. All right, so I'm gonna let the air out and just, I'm gonna hold the phone in the same spot and watch what happens to this outer bead um, as the air comes out of the tire. You can hear the tire start to pull off the bead and look at that. That is not good. So now dirt can get into here. So I'm not gonna be able to run these tires as low as air pressure as I would like. Um, because this is a shitty wheel, a good ATV wheel, uh, the bead will hold itself fully seated with zero PSI. This wheel, once you get down below say five PSI, it starts to suck off the bead. The bead's got a weird lip and taper in it. I'll show you that in another clip. Uh, but because of that, <laughs> these tires are going to have to have a lot of air in them, which is not good because I wanted them to be shorter than these and I have to run so much air pressure, they're gonna be almost the same height because when I run my 33 bead locks on the Pioneer, I have zero, or on the Can-Am, I have zero PSI. So I think I may have figured out why these rims are cheap. This bead lip is pretty far from the rim and the tire bead is only so fat. So once the tire bead sits here, it's not gonna to wanna to push it all the way out to here. It's because this radius right here is too big so the tire can't seal up against this part of the rim and the spacing from this bead to the rim is too big this is like an automotive style bead not a low pressure low psi bead that radius is terrible this is really one of the best tools i've bought in a long time for mounting tires um, i usually do bead locks so it's not a problem but this is not a bead lock so i'm actually having to use the tire iron and put in some elbow grease but with this tool you lock it down in there and then number one, it protects your valve stem because the tire will slide right past the valve stem. And uh, it keeps the tire from, the rim from sliding. So now I just start working in one direction and it'll pop right on there. And it'll, this will help it slide into that, that deep part of the wheel here. This tool is so nice for mounting tires by hand. So some tips and tricks on how to get a tire beaded onto a shitty wheel. 
aka a non-bead lock or a wheel that doesn't fit right like this one. So use the ratchet strap trick. Put the ratchet strap all the way around the wheel. Okay. And then you got to take the wheel and get that ratchet strap as tight as you can. So you're going to fold in one part of the tire. You're going to crank, crank it all the way down. But then you want that tension evenly distributed around the wheel. So you got to pick up the wheel as high as you can and slam it on the ground. Slam it, slam it different spots until you get the tension even. And then sometimes you tighten it again and repeat. Then clip on your air hose to your air chuck. Uh, it helps to have one of the air hoses with the little clippy guys. Um, I didn't have one that was, I had to use a deep one in here. But a lot of times I'll use one of these. And then I'll take out the insert too. So it's high flow. I have one of those right here somewhere. I had to use it on one wheel. Um, let me see this one. So you see how it's wide open? It's drilled out so it flows faster. A good size air compressor, which I don't have, and a short air hose, which I don't have, also helps. Um, clip that on there and start spraying, and then kick on the center of the wheel to move the wheel in and out, and that'll help it grab. If that doesn't work, spray soapy water, repeat, get the strap tighter. If that doesn't work, then you gotta use ether or a bead cheater, cedar thing. 